Um, he's a guy that can speak from the standpoint of understanding what it means to be an MVP. Uh, you talk about a self-made player, a guy who really coming into the league um, was a good basketball player, but no one expected him to become a two-time MVP. And to his credit, through his work and discipline and player development, he became an MVP. And, you know, I know a lot of guys enjoy playing basketball with him. He's a savant in his understanding of the game. Um, and so I think it's a good hire. I think it was a surprising hire out of the box. Uh, but I've known Steve a long time. I played against him in college in the WCC. He was a headache then. Uh, and, and now here he is. Uh, and I know knowing him, he really wants that ring uh, where he's having a huge impact on the situation. And I think this puts him in that position. Well, from, from a, Go ahead, Max, uh, I'll follow you. a fit point of view, as far as Kyrie Irving goes, um, because I, I mentioned, like, it seemed like Nash and KD really got along when Nash was sort of a consultant, but sort of a coach with the Warriors. Um, and so it, it's KD's team. So he has to sign off, obviously. And so that works. From the, from the point of view of Kyrie Irving, guys, we know what it is with Kyrie. He's a champion and played big in the championship. Um, but other than with LeBron James... Teams have consistently been worse with him on them with him, than with him off them. And we have a nice sample size because both with the Celtics and with the Nets and even with Cleveland, even though he was a young guy without a lot of good teammates, we see when he was playing, when he wasn't playing because of injury with, with Boston and with Brooklyn. Teams got a little better without him. Now, how is that possible considering Kyrie Irving's skill set? He's maybe the most skilled player ever. Like, who has better handles ever than Kyrie? And then among them, who can shoot like Kyrie? And then among them, who can finish in the paint like Kyrie? This dude is unreal, gifted, and skilled, um, but has not been able, other than the one year with LeBron, to help lead a team to a championship. And in fact, even make a team better, which is crazy. Steve Nash has certain things in common with him as a player. Steve Nash never picked up his dribble, right? And the ball sticks with Kyrie, very different from Steph Curry and KD, where the ball doesn't stick with Steph, but it does with Kyrie. Steve Nash has probably been thinking a lot about how to make that work and how to get the most out of Kyrie. I think it makes sense mm -hmm. the more I think about it. If he has talent as a coach, because being a head coach is more than the X's and O's, obviously, it's about leading guys. And if he has that part of his personality... Um, then I, it, it mm -hmm. might be a very good fit, Stephen A. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> let me take the gloves off. Let me be very, very clear about where the hell I stand. I am not knocking Steve Nash in any way. Not only do I think he will do a good job, I'm happy for him because he's one of the best guys you could ever meet, okay? I'm happy for him. I think Sean Marks has done a damn good job building the Brooklyn Nets, and obviously, he's got KD and Kyrie there. He's trying to win basketball games. I get it. I'm not talking about that. I am saying that in this seat, as a black man sitting on national television, I cannot tell you, I cannot count the number of times that black athletes, black coaches, in a variety of sports have come to me time and time and time again, Stephen A., Say this, Stephen A., bring this up. The stuff that we got to go through to scratch and claw to get half of what they have, it never, ever, ever ends, Stephen A. Fine. That's this situation, Richard. No matter what anyone says, that's what this comes down to. Now, again, somehow, some way, we have to compartmentalize and understand we're not knocking Steve Nash. And we're not knocking Sean Marks. And we're not knocking your reality that this is just about basketball. It's not about race with them. I'm not accusing them of that. What I am saying is that, damn, if you've built a foundation and then Steve Kerr comes in and win championships, that's one scenario. If you David Fisdale in, in Memphis and then you lose your job and people start trying to talk junk and lie on you or get on you, and luckily he ended up with the Knicks job thereafter because you had people trying to sabotage his career before he really built one as a head coach. That's another issue. When you sit up there and look at Ty Lue in Cleveland, my God, you won a championship. And they're sitting there, Carver, well, they need a leader and they need someone that resonates with them. I mean, damn, that ain't a qualification. The guy got a chip. He got a chip and went to three straight NBA finals. We just going to ignore the fact 
that he did that because LeBron James was his star? Well, if he can take LeBron James to three straight NBA Finals and win a chip, who's to say he can't do that for KD and Kyrie? All I'm trying to say is that there's always reasons, there's always rationale, there's always some level of justification to deny us what we have earned. So I appreciate where the both of you are coming from. I don't disagree with a word you said about Sean Marks. I don't disagree with a word that you said about Steve Nash. But as me sitting in this chair, I will stand alone and I will say, regardless of that fact, it is still the latest example of white privilege because once again, we see a person without the resume getting that kind of opportunity. Derek Fisher being in New York okay, wasn't Stephen the same a, kind of opportunity. That was not the same. I, so I don't want to hear that as a, a comparison, because it's not. How, how, but, but I have a question. Now, this how do you thing. respond to Richard's point? Go ahead, Max. How do you respond to Richard's point? I'm sorry to bring it up, but I would, I'd love to hear a response from Stephen A. directly Please, to the point I'm that right you here. pointed out. Let's go. African-American point guards who got jobs right after their playing careers. And so, Stephen A., your, your issue seems to be this is happening for a white player, but it wouldn't be happening for a, a former African-American player so quickly. But Richard had pointed to examples in the not-so-distant past where, in fact, it did. How would you respond to that? Where? I'm just saying. I thought I just answered it was that Jason, question. J J where did it, it happen? No, but, wait, wait, but, but my thing is that you said, you said Jason, first of all, Jason Kidd got a very good team. Derek Fisher inherited the Knicks. What now, team mind was you, that? Mind you, their team was not very good, but but it was still Derek Fisher with the Knicks. That's what I'm. That's what, what? I'm referencing. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question. Richard Rich, 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 Rich Jefferson. Richard Jefferson. You went See? to you went to the NBA Finals. You won a championship. You're a black dude that's been in the NBA. You going to sit up there with a straight face and tell me Derek Fisher getting the Knicks job is the same as landing a job no, 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 that no. coaching KD and Kyrie? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.